Hallo und willkommen an meinem Channel Wolf Aqua, your channel about Horticulture, Aquaculture and Aquaponics. So and today I'm very very excited because I can show you an interview that I did in northern Norway, in Tromsø to be more precise, at a recirculation aquaculture research facility. And I could see or I could visit the new research systems. And I'm very happy to show you today an interview about it. For those of you that are not familiar with the benefits of a recirculation aquaculture system, I already made a video about raw systems, I put it for you up here in the uh, info box. However, I quickly want to explain some key benefits of those kind of systems. Uh, one is, like the name is already indicating, the water is recirculated all the time and those systems can reuse 95 up to 99% of their water. Furthermore, that fish escapes to the wild and maybe interbreed with a wild species is very unlikely because those systems are usually using uh, tanks and they are enclosed. So fish can actually not escape from those kind of systems. And on the other hand, you have full control over the water parameters so you can prevent any pathogens harm your fish. But now let's go together to northern Norway and check out their new research facility which is I think beautifully built and maybe you can gain some insights and in design and uh, technical ideas and I hope you enjoy this interview and let's go. We had quite some snow last night. Uh, yeah, yeah, welcome. Here we are today at Havbrück Station, close to Tromsø. That's a research station about recirculation aquaculture systems and about different fish species and things related to aquaculture in general. And inside here, uh, Chris Vestega is waiting for us. He's a biological kind of technician here that works at the station and we can ask him some questions, we can interview him. And uh, let's go inside and see what he does. <laughs> All right, here we are now in Halfbrook Station with uh, Chris Versteger and we, are, we can ask him now some questions about the research that has been done or that is going on here at the facility. And hi, Chris. Hello, Paul. Thank you for yeah, inviting me. Yeah, well, thank you for having me here. Um, all right, would you like to uh, introduce yourself, what you're doing, what's your background and how do you end up here in northern Norway? So basically, uh, I started my studies in, uh, in Wageningen. Um, yeah, I did uh, focus there on RAS research and eventually um, yeah, I was looking for a job and it was quite hard because it was actually the time of uh, Corona and eventually my old supervisor, he called me uh, Vasco Mota to take over his job for a few months because he was on going on parental leave. Mm -hmm. uh, he was working at Novima and Novima is a 50% owner of this company and also the university is a 50% owner of this company. And basically I did my RAS research here at this facility. And um, yeah, I liked the facility and they needed someone to stay here to work with RAS because they didn't have anyone that was competent to work with RAS biology. Okay, just for, for my viewers, uh, can you explain what RAS means? Yes, those are recirculating aquaculture systems. So basically the water um, is every time being reused. Right. Um, yeah, you have flow through systems, water comes in, water goes out in RAS, 95%, that's what we aim for here, 95% of the water is being reused. All right, that's nice. Okay, why are fish grown actually in recirculation aquaculture systems? Why they are growing? Yes, or why, why to use uh, RAS systems to grow fish? Uh, why we use them? Um, yeah, the idea with salmon is they have a lot of pathogens in the water. Um, so before there was a lot of use of chemicals to um, yeah, so actually biosecurity, you can say. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one reason for the, for the RAS, because in RAS water comes in, it goes through filters and it stays there. There's not really anything else that's coming in. Uh, you can use UV, you can use ozone. There are multiple ways to uh, disinfect the water. Um, so that's one reason. Another reason is that here in Norway, the um, permits they have to produce salmon, you don't get them quite easily. And a way to increase the, the, the cultivation of the salmon, the production, mm -hmm. they increase the size of the salmon on land. Instead of from one gram to 100 grams, they, the aim is now to go from one gram to a kilo. All right. And in that way they can uh, increase the total amount of cycles they do in the sea cages in a year. 
All right, so it's like kind of they utilize Rust to first have full control of the environment where the young fish are growing up and then also to um, maximize production uh, in each of the volume units they are having. All right, okay, cool. And, um, but here in this uh, research station, you not only have a re recirculation aquaculture systems, I saw already in our first pre-talk, uh, you also grow different types of fish. So what, are, what kind of species do you have here at the facility? Yeah, so, well, we are in Norway, the main species is, and it will be salmon, of course. So that's, I guess, like 70% of the research. Uh, but next to that we also have the snow crab, we mm -hmm. have the king crab, and we also do research on algae, Atlantic char, wolfish, and cod. And we have the lumpfish. And lumpfish, well, it's being used as a natural uh, fish, natural pred predator of the sea lice, which is a, yeah, it, the sea lice attaches to the salmon and it's not good for the health. So basically they, we do research on that as well. But my topic is, will be RAS. On the RAS? Yeah, okay. only on the RAS. So the idea is actually with the uh, lumpfish, that the lumpfish is also in the sea cages with the salmon, and then kind of snacking off the sea lices from the salmon, right? Exactly, yes. Uh, tasty. Yeah, that's nice if it works. And it does work to some extent, right? From what I understood, yes. And uh, the research is still ongoing, and I guess it, keeps on improving on that. Uh. All right, nice. And you also do research here, you just said about pathogens and yeah. those kind of systems also? Yeah, so we have a pathogen facility and it has flow through systems. Uh, that what, what it was basically built for. But they, in that facility, they built nine individual RAS systems. Oh, all right. So um, the idea is that if there's an outbreak of a pathogen, which could get in through inlet water, then at least we've d done the research on it and we can try to get it out of the system. All right. And also we want to see what kind of effect it has in the water. Because rust water is totally different than the water you have in the sea, of course. Yeah, it's kind of unique to have a pathogen system for recirculation aquaculture system, isn't it? Yes, we are indeed one of the only ones in the world that can do this kind of research. Um, yeah, it's, and actually that facility is always packed with research like every year every month it seems like when everything when we have everything ready the research want to come in as well all right nice so if so much uh, research is going on over here um, i think you're also connected to a university i assume right yes so the university is 50 percent owner and uh, yeah the Novima is 50 percent owner so we have researchers coming in from both but also phd students coming in from both and another thing, um, this RAS, the new RAS that is being built here, is also, is also going to be used in a RAS study. Mm -hmm. So like a whole new bachelor they started here, a whole new uh, master program. And it's only going to focus on RAS. So they took in a new professor, mm -hmm. uh, Jelena Kolarovic. And um, yeah, so it's going to be fun. We're going to have a lot of students, a lot of researchers. If you do so much research here on RAS, where do you see are the big challenges for recirculation systems currently? I think uh, for us it differs completely then to the uh, production sites. So what we here have, like we have like individual RAS systems. So in total now in the new facility, we could have 18 cubic systems, all connected to their own RAS. Mm -hmm. And we have six nine cubic systems and they are all connected to their own RAS. So and with RAS we mean like the water treatment units that they have. In a production system they there could be like one water treatment system which is connected to multiple uh, tanks basically. So for us here the biggest thing, the biggest threat we have is that the water quality is not the same between each RAS. So if one thing happens uh, yesterday evening then today we have to change that for all systems to get the same amount of water, uh, the same water quality again. The same yeah, like nitrite values, the same ammonium values, the same nit nitrate values. Because you want everything in research to be standardized. Everything has to be the same. All right, so you say one of the biggest challenges in recirculation aquaculture systems is to have very stable, reliable water quality? In research, yes. And I guess also in production, but um, 
this is the biggest challenge for us. But I think in production they will more focus on the growing and the feed really conversion. The production, yeah. Can you just tell us roughly how uh, the setup of a small scale recirculation system is like? You have a fish tank, then you have a solid filtration unit, biotic filtration. So can you give us an idea what the ruffle, roughly the components are of such a recirculation system? Yeah, for us it starts at the fish, fish tank and then we have a solid removal. But we have it in a two, two ways, two steps. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is the, um, the swill separator. So what happens in the swill separator is like water comes up from below. You have the... Yeah, like a, the, cone. the cone, yeah. Water comes up and denser particles than water, they go down by gravity. Water goes into a pipe and from the pipe it goes to the next solid removal. All right, so it's kind of a sedimentation principle, yes. kind of solid first step yes. of solid removal, yeah. all right? With swirl, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and the, from there it goes to a drum filter. And the drum filter has a mesh of 40 microns, so it takes out really like the bigger particles and eventually you have particles in the water left that are smaller than 40 microns. Mm -hmm. um, from there the water flows towards the uh, moving bed. Biofilter I guess that's then, right? It's a moving bed biofilter, yeah. And we can also have it in a fixed bed. Um, it has three chambers. We can also make a particle trap in the end of the uh, moving bed or mm -hmm. the fixed bed. Which means that if the water goes through the, the chambers, <coughs> the yeah, the trap basically it traps the dead bacteria and the bacteria that get loose from yeah. the um, from the biofilm. Yeah. All right. So then eventually those bacteria will not be going through the systems. Nice. Okay. Um, but coming back to the uh, um, moving bed biofilter, uh, what happens there is that the substances that the, the salmon, for now let's say salmon, um, they produce through the gills or through the feces. Then we talk about ammonium, the uh, substance that is, uh, yeah. It's toxic for them at very low levels already. So on these biochips that we have in the um, in the moving bed, we have bacteria growing, um, and they take out these uh, toxic substances. Or, or they convert it to like yeah. le less harmful substances. Yeah, they convert it. That's the better way of saying it. All right. And then, uh, and from there, the water goes straight back to the fish. Or do you have any kind of a disinfection unit or um, I don't know oxygenation? going on there? Yeah, it depends on the tanks, uh, because like we have the research tanks, so some of them have, for example, ozone also connected. Um, but basically, the first step is the, the, from the moving bed, mm -hmm. the water flows through a perforated plate, where we have a, a counter current of air and water, so water trickles down, air goes up, and in that way we have gas transfer. Mm -hmm. Um, the water falls down into the uh, pump sump and there we have a UV in all RAS systems. All right. And there also water is heated, it's being cooled, um, we have a pH sensor, an oxygen sensor, a salinity sensor and from there water is going to the oxygen cone. All right, and from the oxygen cone then back to the fish? Yes. And there is a possibility on each of us to also connect a protein skimmer. All right, and I guess, well, I assume you put the ozone into the protein skimmer? Yes. All right, so no ozone kind of directly to the water, but ozone through the protein skimmer in the water, and then you just... Yes, together with air and indeed like uh, the bubbling. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, nice. So that's like the basic principle of your uh, RAS system. Yeah. Roughly explain. I know there are much more details about it, uh, but uh, yeah, that's nice. Nice to see. And in what direction do you see this whole recirculation technology moving? Do you see them getting really big scale, large scale, or you, do you see this more like a stagnation in the industry? Where, where do you see the kind of the movements going? Well, if you follow an uh, economical report, I think it was from a few years ago. They said that by 2050, the salmon production would eightfold. Mm -hmm. um, and if the Norwegian government is not giving out permits anymore to grow in the water, then they have to grow them somewhere. And what I see now here in Norway is that on like very large scale these projects are being built and like really big grass facilities are being built in two years and it just keeps on coming. So I feel like it's going to be a big, yeah, a big, like a, a, a big part of, of the salmon industry in Norway at least. All right, yeah. okay, and so it's just at the beginning. 
I think it's in his child shoes. Uh, right. Yeah. So more and more job opportunities will arise for recirculation uh-huh. aquaculture people. Uh-huh. So now one final question, how's your experience here in Norway? I mean, we are very far up north, very close to the Arctic Circle. And um, how, how is your experience to come here f- uh, to Norway? I mean, from the Netherlands uh, to come northern Norway, that's kind of a um, difference, es- especially in the climate. So how is your experience here? Yeah, well, you said we are close to the Arctic Circle, but, Arctic Circle, but we are actually up far above it. <laughs> um, right. So basically, for me, it, it didn't do me that much, but I do hear from other people that are Italian or Spanish that have a lot more sun, that it is really hard to live here. Um, so you have two months of darkness, complete darkness here, and you have two months roughly of complete sun, but then it could be cloudy and like you don't always have sun. Um, yeah, but it, 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 for me, it's the perfect place to live. I love fishing, I love going out in nature, climbing and all this stuff. And there's no way you can do that in the Netherlands. There's no nature for that anymore. And True. here there's so much nature. Well, we took the ride here. You've seen like there were, how many houses did you see? Uh, just a handful of houses. Yeah, it's uh, that's true. So for me, uh, and Tromsø is kind of a big city, it has 80,000 citizens. Uh, in total in North Norway we have 300,000 citizens. So living in Tromsø makes life a bit easier. Um, and 30 minutes around Tromsø with a car you can do anything you want. Skiing, fishing, climbing, hiking, everything. And that's really, really nice. And you felt welcome here when you came here? Yes, at my work, yes. I do think Norwegians uh, in general, they are a bit more uh, private, uh, which is a good thing in some ways. But sometimes as a foreigner, you could feel a bit, uh, yeah, you have moments that you feel alone. All right, all right. Oh, nice. So I'm also considering to maybe stay here for a little bit longer at some point in my life. And uh, well, man, thanks for your time. Yeah, and, uh, thank you.